Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by the Movie Hangout, and let's talk about The Rock denying a Shazam cameo at the end of the movie, Black Adam, that is. There was supposed to be originally a cameo with Zachary Levy as Shazam in the post credit scene, just kind of like tie in the universe. Dwayne Johnson just didn't like that, didn't want to play ball, was like, you know what, I like his Zachary, but it ain't going to happen. We're going to talk about... Kind of how this has come out, uh, because Black Adam obviously didn't do, did not do very well, despite what The Rock says, and they're not moving forward with it. So we're going to talk about it. Before I jump into that, before I ju jump into the juicy details, if you're going over, hit subscribe, click the notification bell, comment and like this video. I want to hear what your opinion is about what The Rock allegedly did to Zachary Levy. Okay, so I'm over here at Batting into Comics. Star Dwayne Johnson said, we put our best foot forward with, Sh with, with Black Adam. It's seemingly called out for sabotaging Shazam, Fury of the Gods by Zachary Levy. Shazam was supposed to do really, really well. The first one did pretty good. The sequel, it is doing horribly. I'm over here at Box Office Mojo, great site where you can see what movies make domestically, internationally, worldwide. So the domestic opening of the first one, Shazam, that was came out in 2019, $53,505,326 for the opening of the movie. Pretty respectable, you know. Um, you know, really, there's just it centers around one character, it's not really an ensemble cast. So that's pretty good. And it's a brand new character that people aren't really aware of. It's not like, you know, Superman or Batman or Spider-Man. So that's, that's really respectable. Now let's see what the sequel is making. So we went from fifth, over $53.5 million to just a little over $30 million. I mean, it's almost a 25... Well, actually it is. It's more than a $25 million drop. That is really bad. By any standard, that is really, really bad, and it does not look like that the sequel is going to catch up anytime soon to the original. And so that brings me to why I'm talking about this in the video. So Black Adam did horribly. They were supposed to help promote Shazam, right, into the universe. The Rock did not want that. The Rock did not want anybody else to really be pushed as, like, the lead superhero in the universe in the DCU, DCU universe, except for him, and then second, the secondary character he wanted was Henry Cavill's Superman. So really, you know, I, I kind of can't blame The Rock. You know, he wanted to kind of take take the whole thing by the reins, you know, and be the leader, but he ended up sabotaging the whole thing. So the groundwork Dwayne Johnson tried to lay for his own DC universe that would have held on to Henry Cavill and the critical role of Superman was wrecked when James Gunn and Peter Safran took over DC Studios. Any specifications Johnson had, they decided weren't worth their time, and out went Cavill. And the former was recently asked about this. Quote, and this was at the Oscars. And by the way, when he, when he said this, he looked really angry. All that I can do, all that we could do when we were making Black Adam, was to put our best foot forward and surround ourselves with the best people and deliver the best movie we could. Our audience score was in the 90s. I don't know if it really was. That might be debatable. Critics took a couple of shots. They took a lot of shots. And that's just the business of it. Using a football analogy for the takeover by Gunn and Safran, he added, but I think it's almost like when you have a pro football team and your quarterback wins the championships and your head coach wins championships, and then a new owner comes in and says, not my coach, not my quarterback. I'm going to go and some... I'm going to go with somebody new. I, I would agree with this with Henry Cavill. Um, he, Henry, I mean, I, I'm not just like hating on The Rock here. I'm just being realistic here. There's some good things about The Rock, but there's also a lot of bad things. Uh, number one, Henry Cavill has been in movies that have made money, made a lot of money. The Rock, he's been in movies that have made money, but usually it's like with a lot of other people. So like he was in um, the Fast and Furious films and those ones – did really well, but I mean, those were already built up by Vin Diesel, Paul Walker. I mean, it, there's a lot of people involved already that kind of made it successful. He just stepped in and kind of just like 
hung on for the ride. With with this, um, and if you look at a lot of the movies where The Rock is the lead, where he's like the main draw, they don't really do that great. Um, they might make a, you know, they'll make a little bit of money, of course, but a lot of the hype around him is bigger than the actual outcome. And you'll notice that with a lot of things in, uh, that, he, that he's involved with. So I do not agree necessarily with this analogy. I mean, Henry Cavill, yeah, he's like the championship quarterback, but I would not say that The Rock is, you know, a championship coach by any stretch at all. Um, it goes on, Johnson sounds as if he takes the transition in stride, though it's clear he might, <clears throat> he might have liked to carry his DCU vision into the future. He touts Black Adam's audience score just as he, he did the small apocryphal profit the film supposedly made in a claim that was rebuked. Moreover, to keep Cavill as one of his centerpieces, he moved heaven and earth. Some say Johnson went too far with his objective, allegedly ruffling feathers and going over executives' heads to get his way. All the while, Warner Brothers, Discovery CEO, David Zaslav, went behind Johnson's back to hire Gunn to reinterpret Superman, also without the knowledge of Cavill. That was a really low blow. They should not have done that. Cavill didn't do anything wrong. So in the dark, the actor rang in his ill-fated comeback and a special video message. As Cavill walked out the door, Johnson and Gunn had a meeting which resulted in Black Adam not being part of the first chapter of Gunn's Gods and Monsters vision for the DCU. Quote, however, DC and Seven Bucks have agreed to continue exploring the most valuable ways Black Adam can, util can be utilized in future DC Universe chapters. So that quote right there, that is corporate speak for, we're not going to do anything with you, man. That's what it is. They're not going to directly say it because it'll create tons of headlines and bad publicity. So they're just like, yeah, you know, we'll, um, we'll call you, Dwayne. We'll... Uh, you know, someone will come along. We'll, we'll call you. That's basically what that means. Uh, it goes on to say that Zachary Levy was per persona non grata in Black Adam, and that was by design, as Johnson allegedly said no to a cameo. He later reportedly blocked David Sandberg, it's added, from, it, from using any Justice Society members in Shazam! Fury of the Gods. post credit scene in which Amelia Court and John... Economos try to recruit old sparkle fingers. Levy bolstered the credibility of these details from behind the scenes of each production uh, when he shared them and cited the source and Instagram story that's blowing up in social media. Levy added text to his story to caption it with his commentary on the scandal. It said, quote, the truth shall set you free. And here's the post right here. It's from the rap uh, talking about how The Rock was like, no way Shazam is going to be in a post credit scene. And Levy writes, the, tr the truth shall set you free right there. Just ridiculous. Uh, another thing that people don't know about too is that The Rock. So The Rock, he endorses all these different products like from water to energy drinks to tequila. I mean, you name it. The guy under, I mean, sh shoes. I mean, it's, it's cool that he has all these endorsements, but he just like promotes them to the point where it's nauseating. And there was a really big rift between him and Warner Brothers during the premiere of Black Adam because what he wanted to do was he wanted to have at the premiere an event where there are children, people of all ages, family friendly. He wanted to have a huge booth to his tequila so that when he was getting interviewed, you'd be able to see the tequila, you know, all over the place and people will be drinking tequila and you see the logo and Warner Brothers told them, they're like, dude, no, that ain't going to happen. This is a family friendly environment. There are people under 21 here. There are people under 10 years old here. But The Rock was like, no, I want to have this here. And they just said, no, we're not doing it. It's not going to happen. He just uses every opportunity. He uses one thing and he uses another company's event to promote his stuff, you know, and it, it just it rubs people the wrong way because Warner Brothers is paying a crazy amount of money <coughs> for the event. They're not they're not creating an event so he could hawk his uh, tequila. But anyway, let me know what you think about that. Do you think that was fair that The Rock cut uh, Zachary Levy's character from the cameo at the end of Black Adam, or do you think he was justified in it? 
Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you want to get future rants, reviews, or original content, click subscribe. Later. Thank you.